Sometimes we may need to simplify radicals that contain both numbers and variables. We can use the same processes as we do for numbers alone or variables alone. For square roots, look for factors that are perfect squares and break up the radicand so it contains these. Remember, a variable with an even exponent is a perfect square. Let's do an example. We're asked to simplify the square root of 80, x to the 7th, y to the 5th. 80 can be factored to 16 times 5. 16 is a perfect square. x to the 7th can be factored to x to the 6th times x. x to the 6th is a perfect square. Similarly, y to the 5th can be factored to y to the 4th times y, and y to the 4th is a perfect square. So we're left with this expression. We'll rearrange the radicands so the perfect squares 16 times x to the 6 times y to the 4th are together on the left side. And the leftovers 5 times x times y are together on the right side. So now we have this expression. We'll break it up into two separate square roots. The square root of 16 x to the 6th y to the 4th times the square root of 5xy. So now we have the product of these two square roots. Taking the square roots of the perfect squares, 16 x to the 6th y to the 4th, gives us 4 x cubed y squared. The square root of 5 x y cannot be simplified, so we just bring it down here. So we're left with 4 x cubed y squared times the square root of 5 x y. We'll summarize by stating that the square root of 80 x to the 7th y to the 5th is equal to 4x cubed y squared times the square root of 5xy. If you're taking the square root of a variable that has an odd negative exponent, it's best to break it up in such a way that the leftover exponent is positive. For example, let's say we're asked to simplify the square root of x to the negative 3. We'll convert x to the negative 3 to x to the negative 4 times x to the 1th, or x. The exponents negative 4 plus 1 add up to negative 3. The exponent in this part, negative 4, is divisible by 2. The leftover x has a positive exponent, which is 1. We'll break up the single square root into two separate square roots, the square root of x to the negative 4 times the square root of x. The square root of x to the negative 4 is equal to x to the negative 2. And the square root of x cannot be simplified, so we just bring it down here. So now we're left with the expression x to the negative 2 times the square root of x. Remember, any number or variable with a negative exponent is the same as its reciprocal with a positive exponent. So x to the negative 2 times the square root of x is the same as the square root of x over x squared. So now we can state that the square root of x to the negative 3 is equal to the square root of x over x squared. Let's do a more complex example. We're asked to simplify the square root of 50a to the 19th, b to the 16th, c to the negative 7th. We'll break 50 up to the perfect square 25 times 2. a to the 19th can be broken down to a to the 18th times a. b to the 16th already has an even exponent, so it can remain as b to the 16th c to the negative 7th can be written as c to the negative 8th times c. The exponents negative 8 plus 1 add up to negative 7, and the leftover c has an exponent of 1, which is positive. So now we have this expression. We'll rearrange the radicands so that all the perfect squares are together on the left side. And the leftovers, 2 times a times c, are together on the right side. Now we'll split the single square root into two separate square roots, the square root of all the perfect squares times the square root of the leftovers. Taking the square roots of all the perfect squares gives us 5a to the 9th, b to the 8th, c to the negative 4th. The square root of 2ac cannot be simplified, so we just write it down here the way it is. So we're left with this expression. Remember, any number or variable with a negative exponent is the same as its reciprocal with a positive exponent. So we'll write it as 5a to the 9th, b to the 8th, times the square root 
of 2ac all over c to the fourth. Now we're left with this expression. So we can state that the square root of 50 a to the 19th, b to the 16th, c to the negative 7th, can be simplified to 5 a to the 9th, b to the 8th, times the square root of 2ac all over c to the power 4. When simplifying cube root radicals, we look for factors that are perfect cubes. Remember, a variable that is a perfect cube has an exponent that's divisible by 3. We'll do an example. We're asked to simplify the cube root of 24x to the 13th, y to the 5th. 24 can be broken down to the perfect cube 8 times 3. x to the 13th can be broken down to the perfect cube x to the 12th times x. And y to the 5th can be broken down to the perfect cube y to the 3rd times y squared. Now we're left with this expression. We'll write the perfect cubes, 8 times x to the 12th times y to the 3rd, together on the left side of the radicand. And the leftover is 3 times x times y squared on the right. So we're left with this expression. We'll split the single cube root into the cube root of the perfect cubes, 8 x to the 12th y to the 3rd, times the cube root of the leftovers, 3 x y squared. Now we have this expression. Taking the cube roots of the perfect cubes gives us 2x to the fourth y. The cube root of 3xy squared cannot be simplified, so we just write it down here the way it is. And we're left with this expression. So we can state that the cube root of 24x to the 13th y to the fifth can be simplified to 2x to the fourth y times the cube root of 3xy squared. Let's do a more complex example. We're asked to simplify the cube root of 127th a to the 17th, b to the 13th, c to the 9th, d to the negative 8th. 127th is a perfect cube, so we'll just write it here the way it is. a to the 17th can be broken down to the perfect cube a to the 15th times a squared. b to the 13th can be broken down to the perfect cube b to the 12th times b. C to the 9th is already a perfect cube, so it can be just written here the way it is. D to the negative 8th can be broken down to the perfect cube D to the negative 9th times D. So now we're left with this expression. We'll write the perfect cubes together on the left side of the radicand. And the leftovers A squared times B times D together on the right side. Now we'll split the single cube root into two separate cube roots the cube root of the perfect cubes, and the cube root of the leftovers. We'll take the cube roots of all the perfect cubes. The cube root of a squared bd cannot be simplified, so we'll just write it down here the way it is. So we're left with this expression. d has an exponent of negative 3, which is the same as the reciprocal with the exponent positive 3. So this expression can be written like this. And we can state that the cube root of 127th a to the 17th, b to the 13th, c to the 9th, d to the negative 8th can be simplified to this expression. To summarize, to simplify square root radicals, look for perfect squares and work from there. And to simplify cube root radicals, look for perfect cubes and work from there.